Hey Titans, this is Mr. Sturtz. Um, we're on lesson 9.3, which is solving quadratic equations using square roots. So grab those student journals, grab your notebooks, wherever you take notes, and here we go. Alright, there's one definition we want you to get down here, um, and that is the definition of a square root, which is a value that, when multiplied by itself, gives us that original number. So a value that, when multiplied by itself, gives us that number. So our core concept kind of dealing with that idea is we have a variable squared equals a number. What we need to do is try to figure out how we can get that variable by itself or how we can get rid of that squared. Um, so the first one here, it says when d, when our number is greater than 0, and we have x squared equals d. So for example, we had like x squared equals 4. This is actually going to have two solutions because how we get that squared out of there, how we cancel out that squared, is we're going to square root both sides. And when we do that, the square root and the squareds kind of just cancel each other out. We have our x left, and the square root of 4 we know as positive and negative 2. Um, because 2 times 2 is 4, and negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. So we have two answers there. Um, our second one, when d is 0, so when that number on the right side is 0, it just has one real solution, and that solution is 0. Because if we take the square root of 0, we're going to get 0. If we have x squared equals 0, well, the only number we can square to get 0 is going to be 0. So we just have one solution. Um, and the last one is when d is less than 0, so when d is negative, we're going to have no real solutions. We cannot take the square root of a negative number if we think about x squared equaling negative 2. And we've talked about before, we can't square any number to get a negative number. No number squared is negative. So that's just going to have no real solutions. Alright, let's do a few examples. Um, we need to get x by itself. So we're going to start off, um, we're going to use our reverse order of operations. Let's go ahead and add 27 to both sides. When we do that, we get those to cancel out. We have a 3x squared equals 27 now. We're going to divide by 3 on both sides because we're doing our opposite operation. So we have x squared equals 27 divided by 3 here. Okay, and if we do 27 divided by 3, we're going to get 9. Now we have that variable squared equals 9. 9 is greater than 0. So if we take the square root of both sides to kind of cancel out that squared there, we're going to be left with x is equal to a positive and a negative 3. Don't forget we have two solutions. We have one positive and one negative. All right, so we have actually two solutions there. All right, example B, do the same thing here. We want to get that x squared by itself on one side, so let's do our opposite operation. So we're going to add 10 to both sides. We have a negative 10 and a positive 10 which gets us to 0. So if we think back to our core concept before, if we take any number squared, the only number that we can plug in for x there that would make it work, make it true, um, is going to be 0. So we just have one solution, and our solution is x equals 0. Just one solution there. All right, and for part C, same thing here. We're going to do the opposite operation, so let's subtract our 11. So we're left with negative 5x squared equals 5 and we're multiplying here so if we do the opposite operation and divide by our negative 5 we have x squared equals a negative 1 and remember what we said with negatives we can't square any number and get a negative answer so we know right away that this has no real solutions So we have no real solutions there whenever that number is negative we're gonna have no real solutions. so there's our kind of three types of examples when our d, when d is positive, we're going to have two answers. When d is 0, we have one answer, and that answer is 0. And when our d is negative, like right here, we have no real solutions. 